And a great big how to do, everybody. Hope you're having a mighty good day. Uh, now, before we get into this, I do want to say this is not a live stream. This is being pre-recorded. But uh, I would like to give a great big shout out and thank you so much to our good buddy Jimmy Spooky Appalachia for coming on here and joining us uh, for some more good old spooky stories. Hey, folks. This is Jimmy. Uh, welcome to Spooky. Wait, we're not on my channel. Sorry. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Well, yeah, Jimmy's on here all the time, so. Yeah, and you're on my channel all the time, too. I, yeah, yeah, people love it when we do these. Uh, we're doing another story collection. People, I mean, I'm getting comment after comment after comment about how much people like when uh, we do these little story collections. And then when yep. we release the big two-hour ones, I got yep. so many comments and I'm doing that sticker giveaway, too. People are writing in and saying this stuff. This one lady said she uh, listens to you and me. All She works night shift, and uh, we. she said that uh, these get her through her night shift sometimes. Uh, and and, that, and that's, that's such a blessing to both of us, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just to hear stuff like that. It makes it all mm -hmm. worth doing. Definitely. Uh, that, that made my day hearing that. Mine, too. Hey, that, yeah. I said, God bless and Bless all you folks and everything. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like I said, big shout out to Jimmy and Spooky Appalachia. So if you are not subscribed to Spooky Appalachia, be sure and head over there and grab him up, subscribe, tell all your friends, family, and everything else. Uh, you'll see a lot more of him here. You'll see me over there. So it's a good time. Yeah, make all your family members subscribe. Grab their phones. Hit the subscribe button. You know, Absolutely. go on their computers. Do it too. Yeah, if you're going down the road, tell somebody, hey, let me use your phone a second. Go subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> your mailman comes to deliver your mail. Oh, man. Make him subscribe. That's right. I got a special delivery for you as well. <laughs> 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 oh, man. But, uh, yeah, like I said, we always have a lot of fun with these, and we love doing them. You folks enjoy it. So it's like a good recipe, you know, mm -hmm. so I change it. But, oh, uh, and uh, we're doing some hank stories. Yeah. Like I said, everybody loves a good hank story. So I also get, uh, oh, a lot of you already know this, I get stories, and these are different stories than Jared's from my fans. Yep. And uh, today we're going to be sharing some of the hank stories that have been sent to me in Spooky Appalachia for you Absolutely. guys to enjoy. Absolutely. So, I guess I'll go ahead and get into the first one. This was one of the first ones that was ever sent to me. And uh, I actually had the guy that sent it to me. He works with me. He came on and told the story. We heard a couple new things about it. Oh, it was man. really cool to revisit that story. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and get into it. The floor is yours. I used to do IT work in Roanoke, Virginia, and one of the buildings I went to was remodeled, was a remodeled farmhouse from 1928 that got turned into the La Manchon French restaurant and later into an office. The story I heard while working there was the building was haunted by two different ghosts. The first ghost was Old Man Clotter. He owned the original farmhouse and all the land around the area. You could tell if the ghost was nearby because there would always be the smell of cigar smoke. The other ghost was called the Blue or the Gray Lady. She was seen looking out the front windows that overlooked the graveyard across the street. In my time working there, I had never seen this blue lady, but on many occasions, when I would, I would randomly smell cigar smoke. Keep in mind, this was a non-smoking building. I always thought this was kind of weird. One day, I was there fixing a network jack <clears throat> in the wall when the faint smell of cigars reached my nose. I like to do all of my work between 
12 and 1 p.m. because everybody was gone to lunch and I could work in peace without interrupting anyone. So when I smelt this, I looked around and I didn't see anyone else. My first thought was someone was smoking on their lunch break and came back. But I looked around and wandered around a bit and nobody was there. And then the smell slowly faded away. This happened to me on many occasions and I could never explain it. And as far as I know, this story is not widely known, so I wanted it to share it with you. Man, oh man. So when we went to uh, record this, or when we recorded this the other day, he told me that that his co-workers talked about that cigar smell all the time, just randomly smelling the cigar smell. Really? Yeah, a lot of them had smelt that just strange smell just come up out of nowhere. And that uh, people around the office talked about that the place was haunted all the time. Uh, and uh, I had a comment on the video, the original one. A lady said she was... Uh, visiting uh, some kinfolk in the graveyard. She looked up at this same building and saw the blue lady looking at her out the window. Oh, man. There's the outline of like a blue figure looking at her out the window, and it, she said it looked exactly like a lady, and she had not heard of this until she heard this story. Man, oh, man. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine... <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you imagine, you know, here it is, you know, you're trying to get your job done, <laughs> you know, and you know, everybody's after lunch, things like that. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, you know, you start smelling like cigar smoke and just to realize you're by yourself. That would be freaky. Yeah, I actually, um, I had a place I worked at in Blacksburg, Virginia. This was about 10 years ago. Um, I was right out of college at the time, and I had to stay late for something. And uh, the people used to joke around and say that office was haunted. And um, I kept hearing stuff falling off and banging noises and stuff. I was God there by way. myself, and I can't explain that. Man. Yeah, I did but not want to But you know, if you think there. about it, there's so many experiences, you know, that folks have with uh, Haynes, you know, spirits, <laughs> ghosts, whatever, that I've heard about people having, uh, here, uh, getting phantom smells. I've heard uh, things like... Uh, cologne, you know, perfumes, yep, things like that. Uh, I myself went to a house once, old abandoned house. And this house was, had, at the time, it had been, it's long gone now, but back then it, it was still standing. And it was built just a little bit after uh, the Civil War. And, you know, I just wanted to go in and see it because, you know, the history of it and stuff. Mm -hmm. And while I was in there, there was this, and it would just come through one of the bedrooms, the master bedroom. And it was a smell of a lady's perfume. And I've never smelled that perfume before or even after that. I've never smelled that scent of perfume. It was real. I mean, it was strange, man. I never, mm. and I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't, uh, I, I didn't feel anything there, anything positive or negative or anything. Yeah. But like I said, I, I, I remember that very plainly. What really if anybody's strange. ever, uh, smelt, you know, phantom, um, farts? <laughs> you never know. The ghost fart. Yeah. 
If any of you folks have ever had yeah, this let us experience know in the comments. Like yeah, absolutely. Let us know. That'd be an interesting one. Oh, yeah. All right, so the next story come to us uh, from Spooky Appalachia. And this one's called The Haunted Hotel, Roanoke, Virginia, 2022. Ooh, another old one of mine. Yeah, only but definitely a goodie. Now, it says, uh, this story is about a haunted hotel. It was sent in by a fan named James. He said that he didn't want to use his full name because the hotel owners might not, you know, like it being shared out and stuff. The name of the hotel has also been left out. It says, hey, I saw your post about unexplained phenomena. A new hotel was recently opened up in Roanoke in the building of a former business. Since I've been working there, me and a few of my co-workers have experienced some very strange stuff inside the building. We wanted to go in. Uh, we wanted to go get uh, someone in there to ghost hunt. But again, not sure how the owners would feel about it. I've had several things happen to me. And I'll just tell you what I've experienced. I'll chat with co-workers later to see if they're willing to share what they've experienced. I'm always seeing movement out of the corners of my eye. I've had a female voice say, Hey, as I've stepped off to the elevator, and I was the only person in the lobby. I've also been cleaning, again, alone in the lobby. And while I was cleaning and whistling, something from the back of the lobby whistled back at me. I've had doors open by themselves. We've also had two separate guests check out early because they claimed that it felt like something crawled into the bed with them. One guest said that Something crawled into the bed and snuggled up behind them. <laughs> and another guest said that something crawled into the bed. And then they said it felt like it grabbed their wrists and started shaking them and said, Can you hear me? I've also had a motion sensor, water fountain, turn off, turn on, and run by itself. For about 30 to 40 seconds. I will say. One co-worker had told me. That she had actually seen a figure. Standing down in the lobby. Wearing older 1800s to 1900s attire. There one minute. And gone the next. Man oh man. Sorry I couldn't help about but laugh at the ghost oh, crawling in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, so you gotta, funny. Yeah, you got to look at it, you know. These ghosts, you know, poor old fellas, they've been there for a long time. Yeah. You know, hey, every now and then it's good to get a little snuggle. Yeah, snuggle <laughs> up with it. You know. Man, so, I'm, that's got to be awkward. Oh, yeah. You know, we don't know. It may be awkward for the ghosts, too. They're like, yeah, hey, you know, man. you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's not oh, the man. first time I've heard of uh, um, somebody sent a story 2013, I think it was back in the summer. I mean, not 20, 2023, sorry, wrong decade. Uh, the day uh, they were hanging out in a hotel and a, a ghost came up and embraced them. Oh, man. Like, oh, man, that's weird. Anyway, yeah, again, sorry I laughed at that. People might know, get mad right. at me. I don't know. Like People said, might it, get it, mad at me. Who knows? I, you know, to each their own. You know, but like I said, in a way, you can kind of see both sides. Yeah, I can see both sides. I definitely can. But you know, and yeah, in <laughs> one way, if you're the person experiencing it, probably not funny. But oh man, you know, you know, it'd be horrifying. But can you imagine running downstairs and saying, "I'm out of here." There's a ghost just snuggled up to me. 
<laughs> <laughs> See, when you look at it that way, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Talk about whispering sweet nothings in your ear. Yeah. <laughs> But seeing something like that, you know, and, you know, like the the one lady with the, uh, seeing somebody in the 1800s and, you know, early 1900s attire, you know, that'd be freaky too. Mm-hmm. Be crazy, man. I know oh, I, I wouldn't want to see it. Yeah. I did have a bunch of people ask me where this hotel was. I, I don't know. I don't even know how to get in contact with this person anymore, to be honest. Yeah. Well, a lot of I mean, times, you know, they just they just want their story shared, yeah. you know, to let it know people know what happened uh, and things like that. But also, there is a lot of these places, like you know, hotels and things like that, that don't want you know that kind of attention to their yeah. hotel. So it kind of you know that way we can still share the experiences, but also we get to keep you know their privacy protected. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a win win for everybody. So when you ask people, if we see it in the comments, I have no clue. Also, right. I get I get stories sent to me, you know, through uh, social media, direct messaging, email, right. uh, comments sometimes. Right. You know, it's you know, this one's over two years old now. I, I don't, <laughs> I couldn't, I don't think I could find the person that sent it if I wanted to. Yeah, that's like me. You know, I've had people send me uh, stories and stuff and people would ask, hey, you know, I live, you know, close to that general area. You know, where exactly would this be? I'd like to go there and check it out, you know. And uh, I'm like, well, I wouldn't say it publicly. I'll ask the people that said, it, you know, that submitted it, you know, if it's all right to share it. And, you know, I'd try to reach out to them and, you know, they wouldn't even reply. Yeah. You know? So we just share the stories as they get sent to us and yep. how they're sent to us. Yep. Sometimes we don't always get uh, exact location, and, you know, sometimes we don't get, you know, exact detail. Mm-hmm. But, like I said, we just share them as we, how we get them. Oh, but this next one, you can go to this place. Guess where it is? No telling. The TNT area of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Oh. Now, this place is famous for Mothman. But this person didn't exactly encounter a Mothman there. Now that's interesting. Yeah. So the first go ahead. thing you hear when you—I'm sorry, I didn't mean uh, to interrupt you there, but, but you know when you first hear about the the TNT bunkers, you know the first thing you think of Mothman. Yep. So to get something you know that's not Mothman related there at the bunkers, you know that's automatically an eye raiser, you know. Mm hmm. But I'll go ahead and get into this one. On a whim one summer night in 2008, my friend and I went exploring the TNT area in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. We checked out the accessible igloos many times, only three of which were actually open, but we wanted to... He wanted to show me some pallets, drums, and other debris that had recently been placed in front of a few of the privately owned igloos, which were located down a different trail than the one that, the, that held the open igloos. This time of year, the gates are blocking off the small roads, so you have to take the trail by foot. We had two flashlights and the moon was really bright, so the trail was well lit. We went down the trail and you could see the three igloos, but the trail was cut off by a small stream that was overflowing. So we turned back around near the first igloo. The one closest to the car and then I smelt what I thought was a dead animal. I didn't say anything because even though the smell was really strong and I didn't smell it on our trip in, we were out in the middle of a wildlife area. It's only natural to smell a dead animal sometimes. 
A few steps later, we were back to where we had parked the car. To get back to the car, we had to go around the farm gate, which was no problem, except I'm a klutz. I got my pants stuck on a weed or something, so I was holding on to the gate's pole with both hands, trying to free myself. My friend was laughing at me, and I was laughing but cursing, staring down at the ground, trying to figure out why I was so tangled up. I felt what was like tall grass or weeds wrapping around my ankles, but I didn't see them. In my peripheral vision, I saw a human form come towards me from my left side, the side closest to the car, and thus freedom. The person put his arm around my shoulder to steady me. At first, I thought it was my friend who had somehow managed to slip behind me and was trying to help me out. Then it clicked that something was really not right. It wasn't exactly tunnel vision, but somehow I seemed to subconsciously block out everything around me and could only focus on this shape that was slightly in front of me. And it seemed like the whole scene was shot in, a mo in movie mode, as if I were watching it on TV and not standing there. I could only see the side and back of the figure. It was a younger male wearing a white t-shirt with tan skin and really brown cut short hair. It only stood about six feet and wasn't very muscular, just an average build, if not maybe on the slim side. What clicked was my friend I was with was wearing a gray sleeveless shirt and is heavily tattooed with a full sleeve on both arms. He stands at about 6'5 and is a bigger guy, fairly muscular, with long brown hair. This was definitely not him, especially since after I freed myself, I whipped around and he was about a foot behind me on the wrong side of the gate still. I snapped back around to see what did help me was gone. I didn't even say anything really until we got back to the safety of the car and started down the road, and I told him what I saw. He swears he didn't see anything but knows that I have a history of seeing things that most people cannot see. And saw he saw how excited and yet shaken I was. So he believed that, uh, he believed at least that I thought I saw something. He said something to the effect of maybe whatever it was, was warning us not to go down the path. To me, that didn't make any sense. I had only experienced it as if we, as we were leaving. The first thing I said was what popped into my head. He didn't want us to leave. That opened up a whole other discussion about there possibly being a body buried there somewhere. The TNT area has seen its fair share of murders and body dumping over the years, so it wouldn't be completely unheard of. I mentioned that there was definitely something dead back there, referencing the horrid stench I had smelled just previous to seeing the apparition again. My friend swears he didn't smell anything which I thought was odd because the stench was so overpowering. But now looking back, 
maybe it was the introductory of a response of, of what was about to happen. I've already told him that if a dead body shows up, don't bother to tell me about it. Instead, I'd just like to continue on thinking I was either hallucinating or saw some sort of residual image of an event that was had probably happened before in that spot. Two legend trippers out there exploring the igloos. Chick gets caught and boy comes to save her. So what'd you think of that, Jared? Uh, just as chilling as the first time I heard him. <laughs> so, I don't know if I ever told you, but I sent this one to one of my uh, friends in Point Pleasant. And um, he said the year before that, there's a shooting range out there nearby. Oh. Which I've heard the, the guns going off. It was, we heard them when, I think we mentioned them in the, the, the walk around video we did at the TNT mm -hmm. area. Yep. Um, so there was a guy a year before this found dead at the shooting range one morning. Oh, man. Like about a year before this happened, and I think it was 2007. I think I'm pretty sure that's what he told me. Golly, man! Yeah. So you know, so, it kind of makes sense. You know, I mean, why there may be, you know, something there. You know, who knows? That may be that. You know, who who they saw. Well, there was also um, there, there's rumors, um, and I've heard that people have seen this stuff. There used to be. Um, like a cult or something that used to go up there in the 80s oh, wow. and 90s about once a year. And uh, one year, uh, they found like a, a table in the, and like a outline of a cat on the table. And then huh. another time, there was a, a girl walking up there and she saw a big bonfire near one of the igloos and she went to go check it out and she saw a bunch of dudes and or. I think it was dudes in cloaks Man. around a bonfire out there. Golly. Now, this is just stuff I've heard. I, I mean, I can't confirm right. that that happened. Just some stuff I heard from people in town. Well, that's definitely chilling, man. I mean, yeah. you know, and it kind of, you know, and, you know, kind of, you know, sums it up to, you know, you got that, you know, here's the guy, you know, that, you know, because of the the one that was found and the experience, you know, I mean, this that is just haunting, you know. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you know, if there was, you know, people like that up there, you know, I, you never know what, you know, may have been conjured up or something. Yeah. Kind of weird. You never know. I've heard about uh, people doing uh, paranormal investigations up there. I, I don't know anything about it. I've right. heard a lot of stuff went on up there. A lot of weird stuff. Man. After the, the whole uh, stuff in the 60s. All right. Now, next story we have here is called The Phantom Whistler, Roanoke, Virginia, September 2022. All right. Now, this one was submitted to Jimmy. Uh, by our, <clears throat> excuse me, by our dear friend, Julie. Now, Julie is an amazing lady who is definitely always on uh, both of our channels. Uh, she sends in stories. Sometimes, you know, she'll come on as a guest. And I need to get her back up on here again, too. I so see. this was actually, uh, Julie did send it to, to me. Um, she actually uh, told a painter that she a lady does portrait paintings about me. This was her experience and Julie sent it to me. And then she, the lady, I think her name's Stephanie became a huge fan too. Oh man. So that was real cool. I just Definitely. thought I'd throw that in there. Thanks to both of them. Really? Oh yeah. Big shout out. Thanks so much to them. All right. It says several nights ago, I got up like I often do at 3 a.m. But this time, it wasn't because I couldn't sleep. I think I actually could have slept until a bit later that morning. I woke up because I heard whistling. 
Now, whistling does not creep me out, but whistling at 3 a.m. does. And it wasn't birds or anything like that. This was a melodious whistle, as though somebody was simply whistling a tune. I went ahead and made my coffee and decided to stay up, thinking it was likely a neighbor doing some of their laundry or whatever. And what freaked me out is when I got into the studio, the whistling began again, and it sounded like it was in the basement just below us. It's very quiet here in the middle of the night, so I was sure somebody was in the basement whistling. I shrugged it off and went on about my day, mentioning it to James, my daughter, my son, and even my mom. We joked about it being ghostly activity, or me finally losing my mind. Well, the next morning, I wake up and come into the studio after I've made my coffee, and I hear the whistling again. Now, this is odd. So I said a little prayer, and just kind of sat there, trying to ignore what I was hearing. Talked to my daughter about it again. She said it was likely someone's video game or maybe just somebody walking around outside, you know, doing whatever they're doing at 3 a.m. I have to admit, I was a bit freaked out. A friend had commented that they too had heard whistling throughout the night, but they live in a different part of Roanoke. But, it got me kind of curious. There's other people hearing this. So I asked a few neighbors, and James mentioned it, and no one else had shared my experience. So I did as any person would do in 2022. I went to Google. First, I Googled whistling in Roanoke, to which I only found a few reports from a couple of weeks ago. People recording hearing strange whistling around the railroad tracks. We don't live that close to the railroad, so I dismissed that and kept searching. I decided to get very specific, and I entered Whistling Grandin Road, Roanoke, Virginia. Jackpot. Chills went up my spine when I opened the article about John Nash, who lived at my address in the 60s. If the name John Nash ain't familiar, it's because he's a Nobel Prize winner for the game theory in mathematics. He was the subject of the movie starring Russell Crowe, A Beautiful Mind. Apparently, while he lived here at my address, he took to whistling while he walked back and forth to the library and around the Grandin and Raleigh Court. Mothers feared for their children and protected them from him as he just looked disheveled and scary. During this time, he was suffering with audio hallucinations due to his schizophrenia and had been in and out of mental institutions. The article stated that he was dubbed the Whistler of Grandin Road. You've got to be kidding me. Granted, I doubt that this connected to my, you know, mid-morning Whistler, however. I hardly believe in coincidences, and I think it's pretty incredible. Additionally, while he lived here, he set a fire that some claimed was intentional. And when James and I were downstairs in the basement a few months ago, we noticed the flame kissed beams just under our apartment. Apparently, his mother had lived in our apartment in the mid to late 60s. But they're numbered the same as they were then. And he resided with her here before her death in 69. Ultimately, he would leave Roanoke, and he also overcame his schizophrenia, which is almost unheard of by the power of the mind. 
It's one of the most bizarre things that's ever happened to me. And it's left me quite speechless and a bit freaked out at first. He would ultimately die in a car accident in New Jersey around 2014 or 15. So I'll link the article in the comments below. Just thought it was something really cool that happened to me that I wanted to share with you guys. So tell me your weird and odd stories. Odd things that happened to me a lot, but this might be the oddest. Typically, it's cool coincidences and connections that I make with you guys. Things that we have in common that connect us, but never did I expect that. I didn't ever did I expect that the Nobel Prize winner John Nash lived here in our apartment and was called the Whistler of Grandin Road. Shocking, but inspiring. I watched a documentary about him this morning because I was so intrigued and will likely read articles about him in days to come. Man, oh man. Yeah, one of my top 10 favorites. Definitely, man, and I can see why. I really, uh, Stephanie, if you if you hear this, definitely want to get you on to tell this story one day, like I'm doing with other folks. Uh, yeah, definitely need definitely need to bring this one back. Oh, I guess we're doing that now, kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, on my channel, but um, maybe it'll make it into a story collection. Uh, definitely want you on to tell this story, though. Uh, amazing story. It's, you know, every time I hear it, I'm on the, the edge of my seat here. Like, yeah. It's, oh. it, this is one of those stories, you know, that I, I, I kind of agree with her, you know, I really don't think that was a coincidence, you know, it couldn't be, I, no, no way, you know, and hearing it at 3 AM, you know, which they say is, you know, the witching hour, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff, everything for you know, the paranormal stuff, ghosts and haints and everything, you know. And also, the uh, also you know, the time he would, you know, be out, you know, whistling, things like that, you know. It's just, man, that's just one of them things that just, uh, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Just run a chill up your spine. Oh, yeah. And it did her, too, she uh, mentioned in the story. Yeah, definitely. And I can understand. It kind of reminds me of my old house where I, I think I told you I had some ac weird activity. Except oh, yeah. instead of a whistle, I would smell smells. Yep, yep. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the cigar story. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, yeah, th th that one, shh, that one's not out yet. <laughs> oh, that is right. Yeah, I mean, you, you folks didn't hear that. <laughs> yep, yep. But it gives you something to look forward to, though. Yep, on my channel. That's it's right. Coming so, up real soon. Yeah. So again, if you don't have Spooky Appalachia, the link will be in the description box below, or just simply look him up. And like I said, uh, you'll be able to see it on the uh, the logo and everything on the, the the cover here. Definitely do that. I'm trying to get my numbers up. To one thing I do is I go film at places like uh, around Appalachia, and with the. Yep larger numbers that I could get in, you know, subscriber numbers, the, the larger numbers would get, get me, gives me more opportunities, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. And something else too, folks, just to kind of throw it out there, uh, where Jimmy does go and film a lot of these places, uh, he does not do, uh, paranormal investigations. He does it for the history only. Uh, and we do talk about the haunts, but it's mostly yeah. that it's mostly, it, it, I guess it's both history and haunts. It's a haunts and history yeah. type tour thing. Right. But he just don't do like paranormal investigating and stuff, you know, while he's there and stuff. So if there's any of you folks, um, that may work or have friends or anything like that, that may be able to get Jimmy into some of these places to film Ooh, maybe yes. privately privately you know uh, 
maybe on a weekend or something like that, possibly, or, you know, just anything like that where he can tell the history of it, things like that. Be sure and let us know. Uh, Both of our emails, I'll be sure and put them up here. Um, You can let me know. I'll put Jimmy's up there. You know, you can just, just, like I said, help him out, you know, because he's, like I said, he's just trying to keep our history alive just like the rest of us. And plus, it's it's good, uh, very good publicity, I'm told, from – for these places. I, I did uh, College Absolutely. Hill Hospital back in the uh, summer. She told me, you know, that video, the two video, between the two videos, it's about 2,000 views. And she got a bunch of people that signed up for tours and investigations yeah. just hearing about it from the video. Absolutely. So it's kind of a win win. You know, we get mm-hmm. to preserve the history and it helps them out with business. So, so like I said, be sure and let us know. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for um, mentioning that, Jared. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, so, you want to take the next story? or I guess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this one, actually, it's funny that you brought up the uh, where I go do the, um, the videos at these places. It's not just haunted places that I do, but it turned, you know, there's a lot of them, so... It turns out right. I can do a lot of them. Uh, the, this this story was in response to a place that uh, we went and filmed at um, called Randolph House in Pulaski, Virginia. Oh, neat. Um, you've seen that video. You know, oh, yeah. That, I, I'm not even investigating, and there's like junk. There's stuff. Out, you, you saw like a blue figure with a lantern in a window. Yeah, yeah, folks, like I said. That, Definitely go and check that out. I should share that video out again. Soon. Yeah, definitely. We should do a new th- do the thing we're doing with the new thumbnails and stuff with that. Get, yeah, get, get a new makeover. That and yeah, that back out there. Uh, that's a good one. But yeah, I think that was that may have been my first location video. Maybe. Might have and, been. It was, uh, a, it was definitely one of the first ones. Yeah, the lady saw this, and. Uh, she sent me in a story of her mother's. Her mother worked there as a, um, gosh, oh, a medical technician at that hospital. She said she was born there at that hospital, but her mother was a medical technician. And this was uh, in the 90s. Oh, man. Uh, and in Pulaski, Virginia, I think a. Uh, well, anyways, I'll go ahead and get into this story. It's de- it's another really good one from early on. All righty. My mother was the only medical technician at the hospital in Pulaski, Virginia. She worked there for many years and saw a lot of strange stuff. But one story always stood out to me. The top floor of the facility was used as storage my mother would often get sent up there to get something. She usually would take the elevator to go up there since it was easier to carry things back down that way. One night, she went up there to get something. And when she got back on the elevator, there was a woman on it. At the time, it didn't occur to her that she would have seen this woman get on the elevator since it never left the top floor. The woman would have had to have been in this room that my mother was in and stepped off onto. They went back down to the first floor and the lady never said a word. My mother told her to have a good night and got off the elevator. She started to walk around the corner on the first floor, and then it hit her. There was no way that this lady could have gotten on the elevator on that floor without her noticing. My mother then turned back around and walked to the elevator. It was empty. She then looked around and didn't see the lady there was nowhere she could have walked off to without going by my mother since it's a straight hall my mother 
then ask the other staff that were on the floor working at the desk if they saw the woman get off the elevator. That's when they told her that people have been seeing that woman on that elevator for many years. People don't know if she's someone who worked there, a patient or what. My mother never thought the spirit was evil or anything, but I think what happened to her has always spooked her. And thank you so much for sending that story. If you're listening, Catherine, it, it yeah. uh, ooh, that's one of those I, that are raised higher on the higher. <laughs> yeah. And you guys, I mean, some of these places, you know, just for me being there, it just felt, I've, I've only been to a couple places like this and it felt like there were like a million eyes watching me while I was there. It is, man, oh it, man. it just gave that vibe, that real spooky vibe. Uh, it, I don't know. I didn't like being there. I can, I can imagine say so. that. And, I and I also found out later, it's actually not safe to be there either. Apparently, a lot of uh, shady activities go on there. Um, the the homeless in town go and, and stay inside because it's not locked up. Oh, man. Which is one of the reasons why we didn't go all the way in. Right. In the video. I don't understand that, you know. Like we always say, you know, no amount of content is worth anybody's health. Or life, no, definitely. Right. I thought it was actually a great video, you know, just from the outside. It definitely you know? is, man. I mean, it gives you, it just kind of gives you, it gives you the idea, uh, mm -hmm. and leaves still leaves a lot to the imagination. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed that too. Uh, well, thank you. All right, folks. Well, we want to thank you for uh, coming up on the porch and listening to me and Jimmy Jawins a little bit and sat around tell some old stories. And again, if you don't have Spooky Appalachia, be sure and head over and subscribe and share them out. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody. Or else. Um, that's right. He'll call the coppers on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dev, so the, the, we do uh, a little uh, collaboration like this on my channel and have been for yep. a while. And we're going to start doing them here on Jared's channel. What did you say we are going to call these, Jared? Uh, front Porch Jawing. Okay, I like it. Uh, so be be on the lookout for more of those. Again, you can watch about one a month on my channel. And uh, I guess about the, we'll do about the same on your channel, Jared. If that's what yeah, you want to do. It's up to yeah. you, though. Like I said these are either going to be something like a Front Porch Jawing or a Maybe something like Front Porch FM. <laughs> Maybe something like that. Stories from it, the porch. Yeah. Let us know what you think of this uh, in the comments, I guess, too. Yeah. We well, hope you liked it. Absolutely, folks. Like I say, if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're new, please subscribe. And like I said, share out, tell your friends. Both of us, we welcome everybody in like family. So thanks so much for joining us. We love you bunches. God bless you and your kin. Have a good have night, a good. folks.